Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. This is the Technics SA350. Uh, let's call this one the Power Supply Tweaks video. Okay, uh, I did build the the Gain Clone Amplifier, the 2x LM uh, 3886 Amplifier plus, well, 50 watts plus 50 watts RMS per channel. It sounds great Work, worked well in the receiver it, it idled kind of hot almost too hot to touch at idle so it, with hard drive and especially with a 4 ohm load it would probably overheat and it would do thermal shutdown if overheated enough times it, it could even burn out the ICs uh, what you're looking at right now of course is the old power transformer and the old filter capacitors the old filter capacitors I'm looking at the monitor crossways so I can't see as well but it, there are uh, 8200 microfarads at, at 45 volts. This particular combination of power transformer and filter capacitors gave an unloaded voltage of uh, plus and minus 42 volts. I say unloaded, it's not really unloaded. The power amps draw about 50 milliamps each, so we're talking about maybe a tenth of an amp, a 100 milliamp draw total at idle. Okay, 100 milliamps at that kind of voltage, though, is about 8 watts, and that's why the heat sink would run, run kind of warm. Now I don't know about this transformer. I don't know if it's uh, if it's a poorly made transformer, or if it's a 100 volt Japanese transformer, or if it's been overheated and shorted a few turns. But it seems to run pretty hot, almost too hot to touch at idle too. Now we can swing the camera around and have a little fun with this right up here. And whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, horrible angle. Okay, we'll crank the tripod up. I'm going to get this thing. I've never done this on video, so I'm not real good at it. Okay, we're getting there. You can re probably read it now, but we'll throw a little bit of light on it from the camera. And it should be pretty visible then. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We're reading just slightly above 120 volts. The line voltage in the house runs pretty high, and that's probably the cause of most of that heat. However, it's a... It's a very doable, very realistic line voltage that does happen in a lot of American homes. I'm estimating about 122 volts. The analog meter is a little hard to read, but 120 volts is still still pretty good and high. And uh, we'll swing the camera around. And uh, in a moment, I'll go ahead and pop the cover. We'll see the inside of it. Give me a time here. Okay, we're doing good on time. Okay, so. I don't know if I can... I drew a schematic of what I've done. I found a couple old uh, power supplies from a couple really, really old-style computer monitors. And they happen to have... I had a pair of power supplies, so I had two transformers. Had to have, happened to have a pair of toroidal power transformers, 123-volt amper rating, with a 20.5-volt secondary on them. And with the voltages I needed, I was able to take a pair of these and uh, wire for wire put the pair, uh, primaries in parallel. The power supplies came with a voltage selector switch. It can be wired for 110 or 220. I put the voltage selector switch on the bottom of the receiver. So now I have a receiver that can be switched over for power in most parts of the world. And the beauty of this is with these being 50, 60 hertz transformers, they, they run very cool, just barely above room temperature, even at 120 volts. Now, I connected the, pair, the secondaries in series, so that forms pretty much a, ser a center tap. So now we got 41 volts center tapped. And because the rectifiers are connected the way they are, the transformer secondaries are each equally loaded on both halves of the cycle, so I don't have, I don't have noise and overheating from... from uh, from unbalanced current draw, you know, positive and negative current draw being unbalanced. They're not unbalanced, they're balanced quite well. So this is the circuit. Like I said, the primaries are in parallel, pin for pin. See the voltage selector in the left position on 110, it puts the primaries in parallel. 220, it puts them in series. Like I said before, the secondaries are connected in series, so they form a 41 volt center tapped secondary. And after I put the big transformers in, much to my dismay and resulted resulted in some pretty pretty objectionable language I found out the display tube wouldn't light up anymore and uh, 
it had been quite a few years since I worked on stereo, so I forgot that uh, the same same 11 volt secondary that ran the the dial lamp that I'm not using anymore since I'm I'm running LEDs now. I run those off of DC power. I didn't even connect anything to the filament supply, and that that's what was going on. The filament supply was across the 12 volt dial lamp, and I had eliminated that, so I fixed that by adding a small transformer from an AC adapter. I broke open an adapter, took some coat hanger wire and made a strap to go over the top with mounting ears. So now I've got two big transformers and a little one inside. And uh, we started out at plus and minus 42 volts with the old power supply. And now I'm running plus and minus 33 volts. But that's not the whole story because uh, as you saw the size of the transformer and those two filter capacitors it had a pretty pretty high internal impedance and I'm thinking that even with the lower voltage under full load I'm still running pretty close to the original voltage but I have less heat and less wasted power because the toroidals are already known to have lower leakage inductance and uh, they also give me over twice the volt amper capacity of the old transformer so I have a much higher efficiency a lot less heat and a lot less voltage drop under load and uh, Low voltage drop under load is what some people call a stiff power supply because the voltage doesn't change very much when you load it down. Okay, in here, of course, we have the inner view. You see the two toroidal transformers mounted flat. Now, this is going to be a fun part because I'm going to try to get in here and show the filament transformer because it's sitting right in front of Maybe I can finagle my way in this way. Let's see here. Okay, on the very bottom, you can see part of the transformer and the strap had to chew away part of the speaker switchboard and I've also added resistors across the headphone resistors this thing used over 200 ohms on each channel for headphone dropping and I'm using low efficiency phones so I went ahead and put 150 ohms no went ahead and put 220 ohms across it and the old resistor plus the new one now results in about 130 ohms so I'm getting about twice as much voltage into the phones got better headphone drive and uh, okay the voltage selector doesn't show it's right in the middle under here uh, let's see if I can do this without causing property damage okay we knocked over the visor goggles but that's not an issue okay you can see it towards the little bit to the right of center near the bottom of the picture we'll crank it on down here Yeah, it's always cool to have worldwide voltage. And I went ahead and put the voltage selector on the bottom. I'm going to be using it in the United States. I don't foresee going overseas. But it's in there. Transformers came with it. Went ahead and put it in there. That's pretty much pretty much it. we got 8 minutes, 16 seconds. Let's see what we can do here. Flip it back over. Now, whereas the old transformer was too hot to touch, this one after running all night, transformers in it were probably like 95 to 100 degrees, barely above room temperature, cooler than a cat's belly. I went ahead and got some Nichicon filter capacitors from Mauser. These were like about $7 a piece, not bad. They were 15,000 microfarad, 35 volt. And uh, the old caps were rated at 85 degrees centigrade, and these were rated at 105 degrees centigrade and uh, 35 volt capacitors running at 33 volts should give me a really really long service life uh, with cooler running transformer I'm using less power and that's a that's a nice point because this thing runs continuously I'm either listening to the computer sound DVD video music or it's my main audio source so it stays on whenever I'm awake that's pretty much it thanks for watching y'all and God bless y'all and We'll see you some more later. It was fun.